provided by. Bring your eyes into the spotlight with Lumify Eye Drops. Lumify dramatically reduces redness to help your eyes look brighter, wider, and more luminous, radiant, vibrant for up to eight hours. Lumify, you won't believe your eyes. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, Pepto Bismol coats your stomach with fast and soothing relief. And try new drug free Pepto Herbal Blends, made from 100% natural ginger and peppermint. This isn't the only split that's coming. Here's the twist the sequel may not happen. There's a baby on the way. And it's a girl! Oh, that's so sweet! <laughs> what a soft is. <laughs> Treat yourself. The new season of E.T. starts Monday. Can y'all tell that we are excited about the new season of E.T. premiering oh, on Monday because so our brand new set, fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji, fire, fire emoji, fire emoji, all, all over, over all yeah. over. You know what? We really hope you treat yourself to some E.T. every night. And before yeah. we say goodnight, we wanted to treat the folks out here at the Santa Monica Pier to some sweet treats. So we teamed up with our girl, our people, Tyra <laughs> Banks, and her new ice cream brand. To hand out, yes, to hand Smize. out some. And what's the flavor we're handing out today? Because it's perfect. Chocolate summer. We're giving out. Happening now. The city of San Antonio trying to tempt the unvaccinated to get vaccinated with the lure of $100 HEB gift cards. But not everybody thinks it's such a great idea. Plus, the fallout continues about the abortion law in Texas and Governor Abbott's comments regarding rape. The new legal action that the Biden administration is now taking against the state of Texas. And you'll notice some cooler mornings over the next few days. I'll let you know how low the temperature will go, along with updated rain chances in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And it's caused by the fact that despite America having unprecedented and successful vaccination program, despite the fact that for almost five months, free vaccines have been available in 80 thousand different locations. We still have nearly 80 million Americans who have failed to get the shot. First at five, new vaccine requirements announced by President Joe Biden this afternoon expected to impact 100 million Americans and more. The president announcing today companies with more than 100 employees either have to require vaccinations or test weekly for the virus now. Paid off time off may be offered for vaccinations and there is a $14,000 penalty per violation. Also as well, vaccinating the unvaccinated, just one piece of the president's six part plan. That plan also includes further protecting the vaccinated through booster shots, keeping schools open, increasing testing and requiring masks, protecting the economic recovery and improving care for those with COVID-19. Those who work in hospitals, home health facilities, and other medical facilities will be required to get vaccinated, as well as those who work in nursing homes with people who receive Medicare and Medicaid. Also, all federal workers and contractors who work with the federal government, those who work in Head Start facilities must also be vaccinated. And the president is calling on U.S. governors to require all teachers and staff to get vaccinated. Large entertainment venues and arenas should require vaccination or proof of negative test for entry. He wants to make testing more available. And starting next week, retailers will begin to sell home rapid test kits at cost for the next three months. TSA will be doubling the fines for travelers who refuse to wear their masks. And you can read more about the full plan right now on KSAT.com. Would a $100 HEB gift card convince you to get vaccinated? Well, that's what the city of San Antonio is hoping for in its latest push to convince unvaccinated residents to get the shot. Yeah, city Council approving the use of federal grant money today to buy up to 10,000 of those gift cards. But as Garrett Berger tells us, not everyone was sold on whether this was the right way to go. Motion passes. Thank you. $1 million is how much city council approved to buy HEB gift cards. 
an incentive health officials hope could sway the unvaccinated and undecided. We have looked at models in other states. I know that the evidence is still mixed, but just know that at the end of the day, we're looking forward for this push and we'll see what we can report out over the next few weeks. Metro Health's director says they hope to roll out the gift cards by the end of the month, but not everyone will get them once they're available. They're only for those who complete their vaccination at a Metro Health vaccination site and only if they got the first shot after July 31st. So if you were fully or partially vaccinated by that day, you can't get a gift card. Though District 7's Anna Sandoval gave her thanks to the already vaccinated. You did the absolutely right thing to protect your health, the health of your family, and the health of the community. Mayor Ron Nuremberg, whose wife works for HEB, recused himself from the item. District 8's Manny Pelias was the only one to vote against after he raised concerns over the ethics of paying people to get vaccinated. And I feel like this this smacks of, of paternalism and, um, and it treats adults like children. Um, I, I think it also is going to reinforce in their minds that there is a risk. Well, they're paying me to do this, right? If it wasn't risky, they wouldn't be paying me. Metro Health Director acknowledged it was a, quote, ethical conundrum, but says this is for those who choose to get vaccinated. And let's be clear, for those who wait, this vaccine, this uh, the virus is still punishing folks. Now, we don't have an exact date on when the city is going to begin offering these gift cards. But if you're thinking about waiting on your vaccination in order to try to get one, Director Jacob says don't. As he puts it, this virus and the Delta variant punishes the procrastinators. Live at HEB, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We have new video, fiery video, of a crash that killed one person in Seguin and sent another to the hospital this morning. This is the video that was sent to us by a KSAT viewer. Right now, we're working to learn the name of the person who died in this crash. According to Seguin police, the crash happened around 7 in the morning along I-10 and FM 725. They say a semi-truck with two people inside had a blowout. The driver lost control. The truck fell off the I-10 bridge and that sparked this fire, which eventually engulfed the truck in flames. The driver was brought to a San Antonio hospital, but the passenger did not survive. A 19 year old man is facing charges after he shot at his neighbor during a fight last night. Jose Alberto Gonzalez was arrested at a home in the 1700 block of Santa Rita Street yesterday. That's not far from Roosevelt and Loop 410. San Antonio police say the 18 year old victim was grazed by a bullet fired by Gonzalez after Gonzalez allegedly challenged that victim to a fight. The victim is expected to make a full recovery. Gonzalez is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. His bond has been set at $100,000. The Department of Justice now stepping into the battle over the new abortion law just signed into law in Texas. The so-called heartbeat law is considered the most restrictive abortion law in the country. It bans abortions after six weeks of pregnancy with no exceptions for incest or rape. ABC's Rena Roy has details about what happens next. It's the most restrictive abortion law in the nation, and now the Justice Department is suing the state of Texas to challenge it. The act is clearly unconstitutional under long-standing Supreme Court precedent. This after nearly two dozen House Democrats wrote a letter to Attorney General Merrick Garland urging legal action. The abortion ban after six weeks of pregnancy makes no exception for rape victims. Governor Greg Abbott under fire for his comments on that. Texas will work tirelessly to make sure that we eliminate all rapists from the streets of Texas by aggressively going out and uh, arresting them and prosecuting them and getting them off the streets. So goal number one in the state of Texas is to eliminate rape so that no woman, no person, will be a victim of rape. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez slamming him on CNN. Well, I find Governor Abbott's comments disgusting. The majority of people who are raped and are, who are sexually assaulted are assaulted by someone that they know. The law also gives private citizens the right to sue anyone who aids and abets an unlawful abortion. Many, many, many babies will be saved. This teenage activist on TikTok helped crash an abortion reporting hotline in protest of the new law. I want to make it very clear to Governor Abbott and to the GOP here in the state. This is the beginning. We're not going to stop until our rights are reinstated. The group Texas Right to Life launched the pro-life website earlier this summer before the new ban went into effect. 
The new law has prompted several lawmakers to suggest they would look into similar laws in their own states like Arkansas, Florida and South Dakota. Some similar bills that already exist have also gotten renewed attention. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. In an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19 in the classroom and keep more kids out of the hospital, one U.S. school district is inching closer to mandating vaccines for students ages 12 and up. The Los Angeles County Board of Education is meeting this afternoon to discuss requiring all eligible students to get vaccinated, a move praised by the Biden administration. Board members say unvaccinated students will need to enroll in the independent study program. Meanwhile, in Detroit, schools are implementing ambitious COVID protocols, including weekly tests for all students and faculty, as well as masks in the classroom. 72% of our employees are vaccinated, so we haven't gotten there yet with mandating it for employees um, and certainly haven't reached that point for students yet. And over in Florida, a judge has allowed school mask mandates to continue there despite an appeal by Governor Ron DeSantis. As the flu season approaches, our KSAC community partners want to help you get your flu vaccine. They say it is more important now because of the pandemic. That's right. Last year, we didn't really experience much of a flu season because so many of us were masking up, social distancing and staying home. This year, it's anticipated to be different with school, work and much of the leisure activities back in full force. University Health in Bear County will be offering free drive through flu shots. So starting September 18th, they're going to be at various locations all month long. For more information, you can head over to ksatcommunity.com. A new law now being called a significant first step in trying to lower the cost of insulin, although it won't help all diabetics. The price will be capped at $25 starting early next year. The price had nearly tripled in the last decade alone, according to the bill's leading sponsor, the Democratic lawmaker out of Round Rock. Jesse DeGoyado says he was also once a teacher on San Antonio's west side who saw what diabetics were doing to diabetes, rather, was doing to his students and their families. Only 28 years old on his first campaign, State Representative James Tallarico learned he had type 1 diabetes. I don't think I had my blood sugar tested before. I didn't even know what blood sugar was. Almost as shocking as the diagnosis, he says his first 30-day supply cost him $648. Knowing other diabetics were paying that and more, his legislation got bipartisan support to make this possible. Insulin is now cheaper for Texans across the entire state. It was almost surreal and there was nothing to like, um, you know, take away from that moment. A type 1 diabetic herself, Rava Verma, testified in support of Tallarico's legislation. Three vials of insulin were costing her $1,200. Come January of next year, the price per vial will be capped at $25. But what about the uninsured and those on Medicaid? What options do they have? The biggest weakness of this bill is that it only protects people with health insurance. Even then, it must be insurance regulated by the state, he says. So a separate bill will create a fund to help reduce the cost for others not covered by the initial bill. Both of these bills are just steps toward our eventual goal, which is free insulin for every single Texan who needs it. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. And today, look at this, 97 the high temperature. So yesterday we hit 100, today, uh-uh, no triple digits out there. The average 92, so of course five degrees above average. The record high, 102, set back in 1893. Del Rio at 102 right now in Warren's backyard. West Kerrville, 94, Floresville, 96 degrees. For the most part, we've got low to mid 90s, even Universal City, 95, Bernie now at 91. As we go through the evening, clear sky, calm wind, temperatures falling off quickly because the relatively dry air that's in place, a lack of humidity out there, dew points in the 50s. So by 10 o'clock, right near 80, we'll drop down into the 70s and actually even more cool mornings on the way. Actually, the coolest weather we've seen in three months around here. We'll talk about that and a change to our rain chances in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. It is a quick fix if you're in need of some quick cash and it's right at your fingertips. We're talking about payday apps. They can be helpful, but also harmful in the long run. So what other options do you have if you're ever in a bind? We'll explain next.
New at five, fast cash. What do you do when you need money, but payday is still a ways off? Paycheck advance apps are now gaining popularity as an alternative, or alternative to payday lenders. While such apps can help in a jam, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore says there are potential downsides to keep in mind. Quick cash. That's what Terry Patterson needed to go visit his dad. So Terry downloaded an app, a Paycheck Advance app, and took a $50 cash advance from his upcoming paycheck. When I was able to get that done, uh, I had enough money to at least cover one of the, you know, some gas along the way, a couple of snacks. Paycheck Advance apps let you request some portion of your next paycheck before payday, usually for a fee or a subscription cost ranging from between one and ten dollars. Then on payday, the advance is recouped by taking the money out of your bank account or your paycheck. Sounds easy enough, but a warning. These services can be great to help you out of a jam once in a while. But you have to really be careful not to make it a regular habit. If you end up using these services regularly, the fees you pay can add up. Research shows that people who use these types of apps tend to take out advances regularly, and that means they sometimes end up in a vicious cycle of borrowing. Money Lion says its app helps its members pay their bills and avoid overdraft fees and gives them greater control over their finances. There are other options. If you're coming up short in paying bills every month, Consumer Reports suggests looking for a bank or credit union that offers short-term small-dollar loans. The APR on these loans generally don't exceed 36%, and they can help you build your credit. As for Terry, he found the Paycheck Advance app helpful, but won't make it a habit. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Going to take a look outside with live cam. Beautiful day out there, and boy, what a great start this morning. And we didn't get up in the hundreds. That's right. And earlier today, morning low temperatures in the 60s all across our area. It looked and felt nice out there. And that's actually some of the coolest readings that we've had in three months. Now we're going to keep this low humidity through Saturday and the low humidity is what's responsible for these more refreshing mornings. And that's going to be the case the next couple of days. We'll get into the details of how cool it's going to get and where in a moment. Also an update on our rain chances as we get into next week and really what they hinge upon in terms of the tropics and tropical moisture. All right, currently 96 degrees at the airport. Let's talk temperatures. Dew point of 54. So once you calculate it, the heat index is actually lower than the air temperature. Look at these dew points, widespread 50s. So it's pleasant in terms of a lack of humidity. Yeah, we still have some heat out there, but at least we don't have that thick mugginess in the air. Del Rio officially 103, Catula 100. Those are our triple digit readings right now. Creaso Springs 99, New Braunfels 96, and lower 90s in the hill country at this time. Let's fast forward to tomorrow morning. 60s continue for most of us. Hondo 67, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, right near 60 degrees. It would not shock me if parts of the hill country drops into the upper 50s by sunrise tomorrow morning. Leon Springs 65 in the morning, Elmendorf 68. Converse 66, Lackland area 68. So we're feeling those cooler mornings tomorrow, Saturday, and then as the humidity returns into the weekend, well, by Sunday, Monday, morning temperatures are back to the 70 degree mark. Now keep in mind the average low is 70 degrees. So our next few mornings are going to be running cooler than average. How about that? Let's talk about our weather pattern. Still, the big blue H is off to the northwest of us, so the upper level high over Colorado. Clockwise circulation around it, as usual, gets us in this northerly flow aloft. And that's giving us this dry air, which is why we can't even make a cloud in our sky. And this future cast shows the difference between the dry air in blue and the muggy and really saturated air in the yellow and orange. So let's go through time. Tomorrow on into Saturday, we still have that northerly breeze. Dry air will be hard pressed to even find a single cloud in the sky. And of course, it makes clouds to make rain. We all know that. And so once this moisture comes off the Gulf of Mexico by Sunday, we'll start to introduce more rain chances. And we'll have some pretty thick moisture in parts of our area as we get into early next week. But what our rain chances really hinge on is some of this energy here in the Western Caribbean and the Yucatan Peninsula. Now this could develop. There's a slight chance it develops into a tropical depression or our next tropical cyclone. 
up to a 30% chance of that as it moves into the southern Gulf of Mexico. That aside, what our rain chances hinge on is just how organized that system is. And I'm not talking if it's a hurricane or not, just how organized the structure is with the little surface low pressure system as it comes on shore. The more organized, the more specific and isolated the rain will be, the less organized, the more widespread it is. And then we share the love. So right now we've got about a 30 to 40% chance in those showers as we get into early part of next week. Tomorrow, we'll start the day at 66 here in San Antonio. Sunny, 97 by the afternoon and east wind at 5 to 10. Triple digits closer to the Rio Grande, pleasant and even 98. But in the hill country tomorrow, we'll be in the lower 90s. Through the weekend, you'll notice the changes. Humidity returns on Sunday, but as well, afternoon temperatures drop back a little closer to 90 Sunday into next week. Boy, next week looks nice. Thank you, Adam. All right, Greg, the Cowboys will have their hands full tonight when they kick things off against the reigning Super Bowl champs. Yeah, the 2021 season is finally here. It is the biggest game of the week, I think, including Sunday. It's the Cowboys against the defending Super Bowl champs. It's Dak Prescott against Tom Brady. It's going to be a great one. We'll get you ready for it. Also, the Texans sign a former Red Raider and Super Bowl star coming up. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys kicked off the 2021 NFL regular season tonight when they faced the defending Super Bowl champions on their home turf in Tampa. One of the Cowboys' primary directors in order to get their first win of the season is trying to stop or at least slow down seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady. Cowboys are seven-and-a-half-point underdogs, but Randy Gregory is expected to have a much bigger role in the Dallas D this year, starting tonight, and he plans right now to disrupt Brady's game. You know, he does a lot of things great. Um, you know, they, they call him the GOAT for a reason. So um, he does a lot of things great, but, you know, like you say, you got to make him, make him feel uncomfortable. And, um, you know, with him, he likes to stand tall. So you got to make sure you keep bodies around him, um, even if you're not hitting them, just, you know, being able to get around them, get your hands up, um, different things like that will help, just knocking them off the spot. Um, just not really giving them a chance to stand there and, and pick us apart um, as a defense. And kickoff tonight in Tampa is set for 720. Before the Texans kick off their regular season on Sunday at home in Houston against the Jacksonville Jaguars, they have added another body to their wide receiver room. Danny Amendola has agreed to one year, two and a half million dollar contract to return home where he played his high school and college ball in Texas. In fact, one of the best games of his life was in Super Bowl 51 at NRG Stadium when the Patriots came from behind to beat Atlanta 34 28 in overtime. In fact, it was Amendola's two point conversion that tied the game at the end of regulation. Now he's another target for starting quarterback back Tyrod Taylor. Danny's been a quality player in this league for a long time. Uh, I happen to have Danny back in Philadelphia when I, uh, a while back. I know what he's all about. It's good to always have uh, veteran leadership in the wide receiver room. Um, he's played a lot of snaps. Um, he's definitely familiar with our offense as well too. Um, just to see him out on the field running around today uh, making plays definitely still see um, the explosiveness and looking forward to being able to continue to keep gelling with him and, and, and using him uh, and having him make plays for our offense. All right, week three of the high school football season starts tonight, including the KSAT 12 Me TV Texas Sports Productions Game of the Week. Tonight will feature the Marshall Rams against the Stevens Falcons in open play in District 29-6A. The Rams are one of the early unbeaten teams with wins over MacArthur and Eagle Pass, while the Falcons are looking for their first win tonight. This is when it counts. Kickoff at Gustafson Stadium is set for 7 p.m. Again, you can see it live at KSAT 12.2, our other digital channel. All right, thank you, Greg. Yeah. And we'll be right back. Some cooler mornings in the 60s, mid 60s tomorrow morning and Saturday morning. So pleasant starts to the to the days and then a lot of sunshine well into the 90s. The rain chances return Sunday, but especially as we get into next week. Consequently, afternoon highs a little lower. At least it'll be cooler. <laughs> Thanks for watching the news at five. World News is next. We'll see you back here at six.